stuck for a while in the way that we were working with couples, which is, um, and, and, and all of us, you know, I had to think about this when, when you were saying that we, we sometimes bring, oh, well, show us your conflict and how you fight at home, so maybe yes. I can help you. Yes. And, and, and you said we re -trauma, you used to re-traumatize them or, or make them go back through the loop. They're fighting in the parking lot on the way yes. home, that we haven't given them any tools to do this differently. Right. And also, even if we did, they do it in the room. Yes. But they don't know without therapists, because you're not going home with them, yeah. they didn't know how to do it. So were we on the wrong track for a while? Oh, really on the wrong track for a long time. I, I think that we, it, it appeared, and we had a hundred years of being, uh, I think, on the wrong track. Um, but it's nobody's fault. It's mm -hmm. the way paradigms happen, is that they, they arise in a context where it, they make sense, mm -hmm. as did the paradigm uh, of uh, childhood exploration and uh, emotional catharsis all made sense given the model of the self that grew up in a context in which that model of the self was logical uh, the, and the focus on the self was logical. Freud could not have come up with an interpersonal model. Right. He almost did. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, re it's really interesting that, that Freud, Freud's first analysis of the first story of childhood trauma was that the child that the person was telling the truth about their parents' seduction, mm -hmm. and uh, then later on he changed the uh, his interpretation and said no, it was the child's fantasy okay. that this didn't happen. It Could wasn't it. experience; yeah. it was fantasy. If he had stayed with this first interpretation that it was experience-based and relational instead of uh, fanciful and imaginative, Freud would have been the first interpersonal theorist. So it took us a but long time the to get there. It took a hundred years to get back to it. we're somewhere now, uh, not only with your couples therapy, but some other people are on a similar mm -hmm. path. The, yes. the field seems to be moving towards intersubjective and relationships and oh, dialogue yes. and yeah. connecting not just with yourself and getting well yourself right. so you can be okay in a relationship, right. but, but growing within a relationship, that yes. the relationship is the place to do that. Yeah, yeah I think it started... Um, it started in the 50s. Uh, Harry Stack Sullivan and his interpersonal theory of psychiatry was probably the first mental health professional to really be relational. Others saw relationship as a contributor to the self. Yes. But, uh, but um, Sullivan saw relationship as constitutive of the self, which is very different uh, from having a factor to having it be foundational. And because he, re he said something um, that was so radical and heretical, which was, it does not matter, he said so much, what happens inside a person. What matters is what happens between persons. And he focused on betweenness, on the between. And, and Martin Buber uh, mm -hmm. comes along at the same time and writes the book on the I-Thou relationship in which he said, all life is meeting. It's not, you know, uh, personal. It's relational. So they were the two people who were ahead of, uh, or, 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 or the originators of that concept. And then it began to develop with the object relations people in England and in America. So it began, it had little threads, but it didn't hit um, a high road until the mid to late 70s with the intersubjectivity people, Stolaro and Arlo and, and uh, a whole bunch of other guys. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and, 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 but, but it's not yet in the mainstream of therapy. Tell me about, you know, um, uh, Imago and yes. how you came up with the name of that oh, the name and of the approaches that seem, yeah. the people get pretty excited about around the world. So yeah. there, there's something in it. It's, it's put in a way that people can use this. Can you tell me more about it? Well, it started with my own divorce, mm -hmm. in which I started the research on couples. Mm -hmm. And I was in Dallas, Texas. And I developed a couples workshop, which is interesting. It was a workshop that's been, it's been um, I've been doing this workshop for over 30 years. And it's now done by over 400 people around the world. Exciting. Um, it's a weekend workshop. And therapists started coming to the workshop and, um, and they were aware that something was going on. I didn't have much consciousness at that point of what was going on. 
but they wanted to come and study with me. So I said, I don't have anything to teach. I'm still at the research mode. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, talk to us about what you're learning. We'll pay you uh, double what you n don't normally get just to talk to us. Mm -hmm. so, well, I hey. can't turn that down. Absolutely. So after about a year of them coming on a weekly basis and we talking, it became clear to all of us that something was emerging that looked like a system. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just a series of awarenesses, but an interrelated, connected system theory. And somebody said to me one day, you'd better copyright this thing. And I said, doesn't even have a name. What is this thing? They said, well, let's name it. So uh, it's based on the idea of internal representation which comes from psychodynamic theory mm -hmm. that everybody Imaging creates a mirror picture yes. of the outer. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I had refined that somewhat. And, and um, so somebody said, well, you're actually talking about a representation, but you can't call it representational therapy. Um, somebody said, well, you could call it a picture. You can't call it picture therapy. Well, yeah, well it's an image. Well, image therapy doesn't sound very interesting. So I said, well, wait, wait a minute wonder what image means. So I went to the dictionary, and Im image in Latin is imago. Okay. So I said, well, image therapy Should doesn't sound very that. sexy, mm -hmm. but imago sounds sexy. There you go. So we just picked it as the Latin name yeah. for the internal representation. I and, like that. And somebody said to me, um, well, nobody will know what it means. And I said, well, tell them. Mm -hmm. and, um, and somebody else said, um, well, uh, you know, that's, you need a name that people recognize immediately for what it is. And I said, well, I can't think of any names of psychotherapies that are that obvious. But anyway, this is going to be a household word and everybody will know what it means. I was just kidding. <laughs> so now, it's exciting. It's now sort of a household word in, in the You also, culture. I mean, you, you think in images yourself. You, uh, yes. On your website, I saw, I, and, and I liked what you were talking about, that it, it's, yeah, stay in the canoe and paddle, yes. essentially, and yeah. stay in there until yes. the other person senses and right. feels that you're with them and that you're... You, you want to talk a little bit? It's a yeah. nice metaphor, anyway. Well, it's a, it, it, that was an essay that I wrote, um, actually, probably now, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and it basically has to do with the fact that um, that to have a good relationship, you have to stay engaged and committed and you have to practice. Paddling means there's something you got to do all the time. And if it gets hard and you jump out of the canoe, you're just going to get wet and you may drown. But if you stay in the canoe and paddle, i.e. do mm -hmm. the exercise, do the dialogue process and all that, you'll finally wind up... Even as you go mission. through rough waters or smooth yes. waters? And, and especially when you're in rough waters, you better paddle. Right. Because anybody who's ever paddled a canoe in a yeah. storm knows that's when you don't quit paddling that's is when, right. the, when the storm is there. So does and the therapist get the in the wave. canoe or stand on the, on the banks and shout words of encouragement and let them paddle Well, I think it's that the their metaphor breaks down a little bit. <laughs> but, but the point would be that you will have learned in the therapy process as a couple, how to row your canoe and what to do in a storm. And the therapist is a facilitator of that process. Doesn't always have to be there. I call Imago a portable therapy. Yes. Namely, you can take it with you. And if you can't, then it doesn't do you much good. Not if, you if can it's only just happening it in, in your 50-minute appointment. That's right. If you can't use it out of the life.